Welcome to our horse's first video series, exploring equine hoof care and evaluation of your horse's hooves. I am Jussi Hurmola. I have a technical background and in my previous EduTech and R&D role I got to become quite familiar with the miracle that is the equine hoof. In this video I will explore what are 3D shoes and why do we use them instead of steel shoes. When making horse shoes out of plastic materials, it's possible to incorporate many properties that would be difficult to reproduce in steel or aluminium shoes. Shoeing solutions that offer flexion, shock absorption and alternative attachment methods to nails through hoof are relatively simple to execute using plastic. Plastic and composite materials are lighter than steel plus pads. Bars, wedges and other mechanics can be easily added to a single plastic shoe with minimal increase to weight. One thing that often comes up with plastic shoes is that they are not durable enough for heavy use or that they don't offer enough grip during harsh winter weather in countries where you might, may have up to 6 months of ice and snow. Yes, they can wear too fast and they can be slippery just like a steel shoe. Plastic shoes need to be modeled and adjusted individually to each hoof and use case. Our showcase today has been purposely selected for the extreme demands on durability and grip required by this horse so that he can perform his work. This draft horse weighs over 900 kg and his job requires him to mostly walk and trot on hard surfaces for several hours every day. We have selected our most durable and shock absorbent plastic horseshoe, which has been fitted to this hoof using photogrammetry, that's 3D scanning. In addition, we have built certain mechanics into the shoes based on this horse's radiographs, conformation and individual needs. Excellent grip is extremely important in these shoes, since this horse has to pull a very heavy load across asphalt, slippery cobblestones and pavements all year around, in all possible weather conditions. There's also a thick 1cm iron cushion structure in the shoe that helps protect the soft structures and distal lower joints from the relentless impact and unyielding sideways twist of the hard surfaces where he has to work. Normal steel shoes do not last longer than 4 weeks in these conditions, so when using steel shoes for these boys, we add hardened studs or a layer of tungsten carbide particles so that the shoes last the entire shoeing interval. How will plastic shoe hold up under these conditions? Here is the horse at the end of the shoeing interval. The plastic shoe looks quite good after 7 weeks on the horse's feet. The toes are a bit worn, but this is because of the motion of the hooves rounding the toe in movement, which occurs also in the studded or coated steel shoes during a shoeing interval. The hoof capsules have held up very nicely, and the hoof growth has not resulted in big negative change to the hoof pastern axis. With heavier horses you often see some distortion and fragmentation in the lower part of the hoof capsule, but here the flaring and crushing has been quite minimal. The shoes have similar studs to those we use on car tires, which improves the grip on icy surfaces or other specially challenging surfaces where the TPU material's grip properties are no longer enough. These studs or pins do not bite into sand or other softer surfaces and so reduce the stress on the lower joints and soft tissues that can be caused by the more traditional larger winter studs. The shoes and packing are removed, the internal surfaces are cleaned and then they can be glued back for another 7 weeks. In this particular case, we add nails to improve the stability of the shoes. Glue slowly starts to give up during the shoeing interval, especially in our challenging Finnish weather conditions and the nails help to ensure the shoe stay until the next shoeing. Here the nails are not hit directly into the hoof, but they are hit into the shoe bottom and then through the cuff and clenched on top of the cuff. This helps to reduce movement of the cuff so that the glue has a chance to last longer 
and even when the glue no longer holds, the nails hold the cuff in place so that the shoes stay on regardless. You can of course attach plastic shoes with nails alone, but these hooves have had quite extreme flair in the lower hoof capsule, so we prefer to keep the nails out of the weak hoof. Plastic shoes can also be attached with glue alone or cast them on with casting tape. So for this working horse, the benefits of plastic shoes are 1. Better grip 2. Full support to the frog and the sole 3. Air cushion shop absorption 4. The shoe weighs about a third of a steel shoe 5. Nails are not penetrating weak hoof 6. Full customization of shape according to radiograph. The ground surface contact of the shoe shares equalized pressure and responsibility across the frog, sole and hoof capsule. The internal area of the shoe directly under the sole and coffin bone has a couple of millimeters of space to allow for flexion. The first picture is of one of the front hooves trimmed around three shoeing intervals earlier, before we started using the plastic shoes. The following picture is of the same hoof trimmed during this latest shoeing before putting the shoe back on. You can see that the flares and stretched hoof wall has basically disappeared. The white line is coming back together, the frog and sole are stronger and the widest point of the hoof has shifted significantly for the back. These are all things that we were aiming for. The extremely thin sole in the first picture resulted in constant bruises on the heels, heel bars and sole, and discomfort for the horse. Nowadays the bruises are very small and rare and we aim to get rid of them all together. I have often heard it mentioned that covering the hoof bottom sole and frog with a shoe or pad results in weakening or softening of the sole. Personally, I have not seen this happen after shoeing over a thousand hooves with pads or shoes that cover the sole and the frog. <laughs> of course, these particular pads and shoes allow air and moisture to pass through due to their structure. It's not always to find such products on the market and we always use hoof fatigue. It's also completely possible to use pads in a way that will make the horse lame the next day. You can create miracles with a miracle product. All the basic principles need to be taken care of. Finally, we can see our horse take some steps in an icy yard. Slipping doesn't appear to be a problem and the pony seems to be moving symmetrically, even though the uneven and tilted ground makes it a bit difficult to accurately evaluate from here. A few words about the manufacturing process of plastic shoes. These particular shoes are originally made by scanning the hooves and digitally fitting the ground contact area to the hoof bottom and radiographs. These shoes here are made using a 3D printer, which is becoming a more commonly used tool by the farriers worldwide. I find it fascinating that this very modern technique brings us, nevertheless, back to the oldest blacksmiths who were making horseshoes from smelted iron ore. The price range for our modern tools are similar to a forge and an anvil. The materials are now more exotic composite plastics due to what we are trying to achieve and bring to the horses. So the final product horseshoe is still more expensive to produce than a forged steel shoe. It's mostly due to financial reasons that we generally use these shoes for either very small or very large hooves and for horses that have acute or chronic pathologies in their lower limbs that we can further help using this new technology. It offers a wider range of customization, but all these tools and materials can be used and accessed by anyone with the interest to do so. What do the studies say? Most of the studies are concentrating on plastic as a material and it's no surprise that they find that the plastic shoe dampens the impact and lowers the peep acceleration of the hoof. These studies compare barefoot, open heel steel shoe hooves and polyurethane plastic shoes on a hard surface with the horse in motion. For example, Beck et al stated that the maximum amplitude of vertical and horizontal forward-backward accelerations at hoof impact was the lowest when shot using the PU shoeing condition, but the duration of the impact vibrations was lowest when unshod. 
Piusu's cause more damping, less friction and slower absorption at hoof level compared with the other two conditions, barefoot and steel, and thus modify the impact. Synthetic polyurethane shoes may help in reducing beat vibrations. In my opinion, it's difficult to consistently measure plastic shoe parameters because the plastic shoe might be of any shape, structure or material. For example, we are printing with a wide range of materials from carbon fiber reinforced nylon to air filled synthetic rubber. To sum up, plastic shoes can be used pretty much anywhere where you can use a steel shoe and more. The dynamic of the leg does not change and all the basic principles in hoof care and shoeing remain the same and need to be taken into account. Plastic shoes can be self-manufactured or modified, as can steel shoes, even if the tool and skill set is different. Plastic shoes make it possible to create larger and more complex structures due to the lightness of the material. The main reasons we use plastic shoes are 1. Small hooves where nailing is uncomfortable or impossible 2. Large hooves or heavy horses that need a lot of support and the low weight of plastic 3. Remedial shoeing where the plastic materials properties and 3D printing enable greater limitless customization beyond what can be done with metal 4. Attachment without nails. Thank you for listening to this horse's first equine centric hoof care video. Click follow if you are interested in future trends of hoofwear and 3D farriery.